there's lots of different types of malaria parasites, I should say. The one type that we're interested in is called the sporozoid. And it's a very long and slender cell. It's about 10 microns long. It's literally a living, slightly curved scale bar that moves extremely fast, about one to three microns a second. Right? And it does so uh, because it's injected by the mosquito into your skin or the skin of our laboratory mice. And then it runs, literally outruns the neutrophils that chase after him by about being tenfold faster. Right? And it outruns them to, to, to seek and enter into a blood vessels. And then it's dragged with the blood flow throughout our body, but it's specifically arrested in the liver, where it infects a liver cell and then it differentiates and lots of parasites come out again. They get into, jump into red blood cells. There is a huge mass of, red blood, uh, of, of parasitic uh, parasites that accumulate in your circulatory system. They can develop further forms that ultimately result in the generation of a motile egg. Right? How cool is that? A motile egg that penetrates the, the epithelium of the gut of the mosquito and generates what's called an oocyst at the side of the, uh, of the mosquito gut. And you can see oocysts here, because we can do all sorts of uh, classic and, and advanced molecular genetics with these parasites. Uh, individual such cysts at the, at the stomach lining or, or gut lining of the mosquito uh, uh, stomach. And if you s focus on one cyst, you can see in this one cyst from a single parasite that established this, uh, this cyst, there are several hundred to about a thousand parasites that are formed, right? And I just want to show you some data on how we think this is happening, right? So already in the 70s, people did a lot of beautiful EM, and they showed that ultimately the, the plasma membrane of the parasite goes around the entire cyst wall, but then it starts to retreat. And as the plasma membrane retreats, new parasites literally butt out from the membrane, right? So you can see here one parasite that butts out from the retreating plasma membrane. And when they're done with this, you have hundreds of these cells in this extremely constrained environment, and they're just laying next to each other. So here you see the nucleus of one of these parasites, spindle pole body, some associated microtubules. You also see these round uh, structures here, which are individual microtubules. And since 40 years, people have speculated that they're basically responsible for generating the shape of the parasite, and they're, they're, uh, they're important. And they encase a set of organelles that are, again, important for migration and for invasion of the parasite. So we finally succeeded in actually manipulating these uh, microtubules because they're so stable that you can't actually depolymerize them with the classic microtubule depolymerizing agents. And when we de deleted then one of the alpha tubulins that are in the parasite genome, you see that there's not many parasites that are formed. They're actually very weird structures uh, that don't show any microtubules. It's good because we knocked them out, but they don't all also don't show very many other recognizable structures. There seem to be suddenly a lot of multivesicular bodies that are formed, but that's just some uh, random failure of, of parasite formation. Right? But we also thought that, well, if we can knock them out, we can also knock back the microtubules. Right? And we can maybe knock them back in a way that we tune them. Right? So we managed to generate parasites that have only eight microtubules, another parasite line that only has nine microtubules. Right? Another parasite line that has 10 microtubules, and so on. Right? And we see a very nice sort of threshold that up to 9 microtubules per parasite, you get very badly shaped parasites that are totally useless in infecting anything further down the, the life cycle, while just one microtubule more makes the parasite sufficiently efficient to enter into the salivary gland of the mosquito and be sped back into your skin. Right? Before doing so, the parasite needs to get out of the cyst, and it does this by bursting the cyst in a, in a quite peculiar manner. It first starts to be motile, and then it extrudes little blebs, and it pushes its motile parasites into these blebs, and then they blob off into the circulating system of the, of, uh, the mosquito, and then, and then rupture. Right? They can also escape by simple explosion and rupture of, of the thing, which is just as spectacular. And with this, I'm already done, and I earned... Yes, my schnapps, and uh, I thank all, all the people who are involved in Cell Networks for putting this together. Thank you. Thank you.